the hell? Why am I on the floor? Yeah, that's my fault. I slipped a little something into your Pepsi Max. And why would you do that? Because I needed time to install it. Install what? That. <clears throat> Dude, what the hell? You put up a glass wall? Sure did. And a good one, too. Uh, why? Well, I'm glad you asked. How's this for a reason? Oh, you got a jacket. Mike got a jacket. Even your little brother got a jacket. So where's my jacket? Oh, no, Doug doesn't need a jacket. He's just a puppet. Listen, dude, just hear me out. I... No, until I get my jacket, you can sit in there and think about what you've done. Yeah, there's just one problem with that. Oh, yeah? And what's that? I'm already out. Learning. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And today we're tackling a long overdue request. No, not that one. No, not that one either. My God. Okay, well that one doesn't even make sense. I am of course talking about this request. Maximilian Schmidt asked, can you make a video on how to phase through walls like Zoom? You bet I can, Schmitty. Cause I'm a nice guy like that. So in order to complete this request, you need to shoot the actor facing through the wall on a green screen, simply just walking forward. Now gang, you can shoot this person just standing up against the wall and walking forward, but in my opinion, it looks a little funny since that person isn't moving forward as they face. And what I mean by that is that it's kind of obvious that the person is standing still at the start of the effect, but either way, if you don't have a green screen, it'll still work. You'll also need to shoot a background plate, like so, to comp your actor in. And if you feel like it, you can also download the glass wall still I made up for this effect. Alrighty, now we have that out of the way, let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects. As always, I've got my comp set up and ready to go. So as you can see, I've got my green screen footage already keyed out. Let's just pluck it on and off so you can see. And I've also got my background plate sitting underneath on the timeline. Now before we get into the effect, let's just have a look at an example from the show as to what we'll actually be doing. There we go. And zoom goes straight through the wall. Pretty simple, huh? So our first step is to add our glass wall, because I sure as hell didn't have one in the shot. The only shot I had an actual glass piece in was this one here, and it was just a tiny piece to sell the effect that I was behind it by smooshing my face into it. So in order to do that, all we need to do is head over to the project menu right here, where I've imported our glass still. And guys, all this is is a simple bit of a dirty glass, just photographed against a black background. So what we'll do is just drag and drop that on our timeline, change the transfer mode to screen, and have a bit of a play with the position, rotation, and scale. Once you're happy, let's head up and add a new solid, and make it light grey. That's pretty good. We'll then hit OK, and drop that below our glass layer, hit T, and bring that opacity around about 15%. This gives our glass a little bit of a frosted feel, but it also provides a bit of contrast between our actor and the background when he phases through. Having said that, if you've got a background plate where it has a wall that you're gonna walk through, just disregard this whole glass wall crap altogether. Now here's how we phase, gang, and I gotta say, it's pretty easy. So first off, we've gotta select our actor footage, right click and pre-compose it, making sure we move all those attributes into the new composition and hit OK. So, why did we do that? Well, I'll explain a little bit later, since we have some phasing to do first. So to do that, it's pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of time and patience. First off, let's duplicate our footage layer and drag it above our glass wall in the timeline. Next up, we need to scrub along the timeline and decide the point at which you want your actor to phase through the wall. This looks like the right spot for me. So at this point, I'll split the clip using Control shift d and delete the excess at the front. From there, let's grab the pen tool, and the idea is we need to pick an origin point for our actor to start phasing. So as you can see, my hand is raised forward. So what I'll do is draw a round mask in the palm of my hand. Now one thing you will notice is I'm adding quite a few mask points. This is mainly because I plan on expanding this mask over the next few frames. So once this mask is done, you can kind of see we have this tiny bit of my hand peeking through the wall. What I'm going to do next is hit F and feather it out, say, 10 pixels just to soften those edges slightly. Next, let's collapse that mask menu down and hit the stopwatch on mask path. We'll then skip ahead a few frames and you guessed it, maybe just because I 
just said it. I'm gonna expand that mask to encompass more of my hand. Once that's done, let's just keep going. Skip ahead a few more frames, expand that mask again. Now gang, if you have to add more points to your mask to make it look better, go for it. It's really simple. All you're gonna do is just hover over the mask until your pen tool has a little plus symbol on it. And hell, if you like, you can even draw other masks to bring in other body parts. I might do that and start bringing in my gigantic egg head, starting with my huge nose. There we go. Same again, hit the stopwatch on mask path, hit F and feather it out. Only this time, we want that mask to start on this frame. So what we'll also have to do is hit the stopwatch on mask opacity. Skip back one frame and crank it to zero. That way it won't show up before we want it. From there, we just gotta keep skipping ahead and adjusting those masks until our character is totally through the wall. Once you're done, it'll look like this. Pretty cool, huh? Now gang, you can have as many masks here as you like. Just remember to really study the actor and make sure your mask reveals have a natural flow and they complement the actor's movements. Otherwise, it might look a bit silly. So it's time to add our vibrating phase blur. This is why we pre-comp the footage. Why? Because this way, we can animate our zoom phasing blur with an adjustment layer and not affect the rest of the scene. And the reason we use an adjustment layer and not just add it to the footage itself is because we want to be able to turn it on and off easily since we're going to use an expression to animate the blur. And this is by far the easiest way to do that. So let's now add that adjustment layer, then head to effect, blur and sharpen and add our box blur. Let's then crank the amount up to 20, the iterations to 10, and then we'll set the type to horizontal. Now guys, these settings are totally subjective as well. You can just have a play around with both the iterations and the amount and find what works for your shot too. But once you're done with that, we're gonna hold the Alt key and click iterations and that'll open our expression box down below. And we're gonna type this expression, wiggle, space, bracket, 20, comma, five, and end bracket. That'll give us that jittery blur we know and love. From there, we have to animate it on and then off. So in order to do that, we're gonna hit T to bring up opacity, and we're gonna crank it all the way down to zero. We'll then scrub along the timeline to the point just before your actor moves forward. And this'll do. We'll then hit the stopwatch, skip ahead, say, two to three frames, and then crank it up to 100. We'll scrub along that timeline once more until you're at the point where you wanna turn it back off. We'll then add a new keyframe, skip ahead those two frames once more, and crank it back down to zero. If we skip back to our original comp now and preview the shot, you can see our actor starts to vibrate, walks through the wall, and stops again. It's really that simple. So that, my friends, is how you phase through a wall like Zoom. And for the second last time this year, that is another shot done. Now there also is another wall phasing effect I'm gonna cover, and that's vision from the Avengers, because it's essentially the same technique, but it does incorporate a little bit of Video Copilot Saber. So I'm gonna save that for a quick tip next time. Someone also asked me in the comments of the teaser to add some blue lightning to it. So I'm just adding that via the same steps we use to add any strike layer. And the end result looks like this. Just as easy as any strike layer and looks pretty cool. Out of all those steps and you get something like this. Yeah, there's just one problem with that. Oh yeah, and what's that? I'm already out. Oh crap. As you can see, not crazy difficult and looks pretty so sweet. Now gang, before I close this one out, I should let you know that the next episode of Film Learning is the season four finale. So the show will take a little break before returning in December, but we'll still have the vlogs and I'm sure I'll have some other stuff floating around on the channel to keep you occupied. But that of course now is my time. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, help us to reach 50,000 subscribers by clicking that button right there. We're almost there. Social media crap is overhead as always. And for the second last time this season, keep learning.